It is an absolute huge honor today to be podcast interviewing my buddy Lampert Stumple, who was born and raised in the Netherlands. We met in Hawaii in 1992 when you had just left the Netherlands. By the way, that country has more names. Uh, People know it by Amsterdam. People know it by Holland. They know it by the Netherlands. They know it by the Netherlands. I mean, I don't don't think there's a country with more names than that, but you're a 1982 graduate from the Royal University of Utrecht School of Dentistry, the Netherlands. He practiced on the island of Aruba till 1985, after which he was in private practice in Breda, the Netherlands. In 1991, he relocated to San Francisco, California. He is the former 1992-2006 Director of Implant Prosthetics, Oral and Maxillofacial Residency Program, University of Pacific, San Francisco. He is the developer of the 3D Click Guide, which is why I asked him to be on my show. He's a holder of two patents, has authored over 25 scientific publications and a textbook chapter. He is a fellow of the Academy of Osseointegration, a member of the Pacific Coast Society for Prosthodontics. Dr. Stumple maintains a private practice in San Francisco and is the CEO of Idon DV Inc. Uh, I, it, did I say that right? Idon DV Inc. I know it is yeah. www.3dclickguide.com. Yeah. So my yeah, first question I have I to ask you, how could you leave Amsterdam for San Francisco? That was a downgrade, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, how it, how it, how it. You think you don't, you don't know San Francisco? No, San I Francisco, always... San Francisco is my favorite town in the United States, it no is doubt. Such, it's such a fantastic town, and, I, and, 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 and I've been so, so happy and lucky, and, and things have been just amazing how things have worked out for us. Um, Holland is a fantastic country, specifically a fantastic country uh, if you uh, want to be average. Uh, that means that it, it works for a lot of people. Uh, real people are not really rich. People are not really poor. Obviously, that means that they uh, have a certain way of behaving as a society. And there is many, many positive things to say to that. Uh, this society in the United States is obviously more, uh, more diverse. And so the opportunities in this country are bigger than the opportunities where I was in Holland. And obviously, we have a, a job as dentist that is somewhat economy related. I mean, the, the nice things cost a lot of money. And um, uh, that is easier to do here in this country than it is in, in Holland. And, and, and I've been now here um, 25 years, and I'm not every day, but on a regular basis, we pinch ourselves in our arms, say how lucky we are to, uh, to live here. It's, it's pretty so that, darn that's good. That's pretty interesting. You, you lived 25 years in, Hall, in the Netherlands and 25 years in America. Someone said, uh, what's home to you? What would you say? I mean, right now, right now, definitely it is here, but but I obviously uh, I have an accent, so I'm not like a real American. Um, <laughs> my daughter, my daughter makes fun of it, and uh, then I quickly remind her who pays everything, and then she shuts up. <laughs> so, well, Amer- so Americans, this is the best that the- Americans are a sucker for an accent. If you want to sell something to America, you get someone with an Australian <laughs> accent, and they'll sell you yeah. sell anything. So yeah, so it- basically. Um, what was going on in your life where you uh, um, started to uh, talk, get into dental implants? And then, and then where did your journey go to where you started getting into 3D click guides? Yeah, because yeah. when I you and I got out of school, none of this. I mean, it was not, everything we're talking about didn't exist probably, what, five or ten years out of dental school for us? Yeah, for me, it was a little bit different. And that was just a matter of being at the right spot in the right time. Um, in 1982, when I, just when I graduated, I actually got to Sweden, uh, and uh, that's where I got my uh, initial implant training. In those days, it was, uh, you had to have uh, four professors uh, sign uh, big letters for you to kind of get in. The Swedes were very stingy in what they allowed uh, to come in. So I've I'm, I'm been on this implant train essentially since 1982, and if you look in the Americas, and 1982 was the, uh, the the Toronto conference when when uh, P.I. Bronemark went to uh, Toronto and kind of showed what the, what they did. So I've been at this already for um, for a long time. But 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 clearly the the education um, that is available now uh, was not there when when we were doing this. And and so a lot of things were haphazard and uh, to, to say the, to say the best and and, um, and uh, blessings to uh, dr. Brandmark professor Brandmark who passed away what last year about a, about one year uh, ago? I think I think last year yeah but yeah. clear back in that day um, they only would teach that to an oral surgeon you couldn't even learn how to do that if you were a general dentist or right Mm-mm-mm-mm, not the surgery no 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 they and um, I mean my first things were um, 
uh, in the operating room and you had to completely scrub in and and it was it was a serious stuff and 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 they did a good job in the sense that they really they really sat on it for a long, long time. It would have been impossible in the U.S. I mean, in the U.S., he would have already had a company from his garage and 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 sold in like the next day, and they were sitting in on for 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 a long time. So so we can be thankful to this uh, giant who really changed. And our his son is in San Francisco, where you live. Um, I don't think so, but yeah. um, I think. It, I know that his son does orthopedics. Right, right. And and in I San know Fran. he's. I, I I understand he's dis- he's working with a company here, but I don't know if he actually lives here. Oh, you know, um, you know more than I do. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna podcast him uh, next month. I just I just wanna I just wanna meet Doctor. Oh, Brad so Mark's funny! Son. You are? <laughs> yeah. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, he's, uh, I um, mean, he he lived through that whole journey. I mean, his dad was um, Doctor. Brandmark. What, yeah. what, what, now, what do you, when you say P I Brandmark, is the P for Professor? Per Ingvar. Per Ingvar. This, this, that's was his name. So his first name was P E R, P E R dash, and then Ingvar, I N G V A R. Yeah, I've been told that like a hundred times. I just can't remember. The other one I can't remember <laughs> is the uh, what IKEA stands for. I, I read yeah. it and I can't remember for five minutes. It's like the, I don't the, even his, know. The first two letters are his initial, his first last name, and the last two letters are the city and state he was born in in Sweden. I, I, and, this news to me, so and, I've learned uh, something today. Where would you say the digital implant world is now? Well, I, 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 and and I think this is going to be an interesting discussion because I I know that I uh, um, I, I go a different path than where most people are going, and that means some people will think that or I'm old fashioned or I'm not understanding what the things are going. The I think in dentistry right now there is a massive push for digital, but I think a lot of my colleagues forget that it's a, a, a method to get a product. Your, uh, your uh, patient doesn't care if your crown was made uh, digitally or manually. Uh, it's an end product. So digital helps production, but it's just a process. And so I think in dentistry right now, people are sold uh, comb beam CTs and intraoral scanners. And, and trust me, I am very knowledgeable about it. I'm a big fan of a lot of these things. But they are not the end all uh, thing where things stand, and so I think that um, that we have to see that, what, that we are using technology that it will either do a better job for the more money, or uh, no, sorry, a better job for less money, uh, the same job for less money, or a better job for for more money. And I, my opinion is that that it is not always clear in every uh, in every case. So I think that. Um, uh, guided surgery as basically where uh, digital is a component of is obviously only needed if you are not a really, really good surgeon. I mean, um, pairing for Bronemark, um, I'm sure has never used um, a, a guided surgery. Um, but someone like me, uh, who is n- not the best surgeon in the world, I feel that I am uh, helped by something that allows me consistently to get uh, everything in the right spot. Okay, so, 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 oh, go ahead. Continue. No, 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 go ahead. Well, I was going to tell you, so your website is 3dclickguide.com. What are my yeah. homies going to find at 3dclickguide.com? Well, th- th- this is what it is. So so when I um, uh, I have basically restored uh, probably six, 7,000 implants, and I've placed about 800. So to kind of give an idea um, what I am. So about... Ten nine years ago, I started going into placing dental implants. Now I did that exactly as you said, uh, with a comb beam and with a surgical guide. Um, and then soon I realized that for one or two implants, that that would be a very cost uh, prohibitive. Uh, and on top of that, it was a lot of work. So those days there were some uh, ways that you could make an analog surgical guide that was clearly not working. And so I uh, um, developed an idea. I, uh, I tried to peddle that to, uh, to different implant companies. They say, no, thank you. And so then we eventually developed it ourselves. So the 3D Click Guide is a, it's a surgical guide, and, 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 and a restricted surgical guide. It means the implant will only go in the one spot that you selected. So if you select it wrong, then it goes into the wrong spot. So if you select it right, it'll go in the right spot. So it allows you to make a surgical guide. No, no, no. But for some people, they they uh, they they have to understand that. For um, 
So it'll allow you to make a surgical guide. I make them in my office in about 20 minutes. That allows me to place an implant exactly in the spot where I want it to be. And so uh, we developed this product. It's like a little kit. You buy one kit for one implant. You buy two kits or two implants, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then you essentially make a surgical guide that will allow you to get the implant exactly in the spot where you want it 10 out of 10 times. And that's where it's, I see the, the application for people who place implants but do not place 500 implants a year. So okay, if you do how, how much does one of your kits cost? Um, 139 139 for one kit, and then what's the, uh, the two kit cost? Uh, the two kits, two times 139 you didn't give them a, a discount for two? Well, that's what we did first. We had a different price, and then but we <laughs> we we realized that that didn't. Come on, work. this is America. The first <laughs> blade pulls the hair out, so the second blade can cut it even closer. So, there so you you're uh, if you go to uh, 3dclickguide.com, um, 3dclickguide.com, you got a really uh, great video there. Explain explain what this kit looks like and and how that works. Well, remembering that probably 90% of the people are listening to this sound only, which I'm glad yeah. because yes. you've got all that beautiful hair and a pink tie and a nice shirt. Oh, I'm sitting here looking all fat though, and huh? old and grandpa -y. <laughs> But uh, explain, explain the, that, uh, that video um, to someone listening in audio. Yeah. So, so essentially, an implant, a dental implant, is an object in space. That's what it is. And we in – with this X, Y, and Z. I mean we in dentistry – Call these numbers differently. We call them mesodistal, buccolingual, apical, coronal. But essentially, uh, an, an implant is an object in space. That means that you have to get that object in a certain position where you want it to be. You don't want it to hit the roots. You want it to have it in bone, and you want to have it um, exiting in such a way that you can uh, put a screw to the occlusal um, to the occlusal table. So what this kit does, what this system does, is that each of these components, the buccolingual the mesodistal, the apical coronal, you're going to determine individually. And you're going to, and that is not a, 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 a big whoopee, but, but it, all of these things you determine individually. And then you make a, you essentially have a little vacuum form uh, tray, and then the parts you glue on with some, uh, with some acrylic. So within uh, three distinct steps, uh, will you get the exact position of that implant, but then essentially encode it in your surgical guide. It's how it is, it is exactly the same. If you make a surgical guide in your computer and you have uh, a, a, a surgical guide made by whatever Nobel or Strauman or something like that, it'll, it'll be the same thing. So um, implant, I mean, uh, um, podcast behavior uh, is mostly under 30. That's what all the research shows. And it's mostly crushing radio. So um, everybody listening to you right now, uh, the, the average person has an hour commute to work. Uh, if they only got 30 minutes, they'll listen to half, they're there and back. But so they're, yeah. they're commuting to work. But so our listeners are under 30. And yeah. so she's, uh, we, the United States has 56 dental schools. They just dumped out 6,000 students uh, two months ago. And I know what they're saying right now. They're, they're listening to you on audio and they're saying, uh, Lambert, I, I went to an American dental school. We didn't place one implant. We never placed one. You're asking me to use this surgical kit. Um, I've never placed one, and they're mad at their dental school. How, how does she go from, I just got out of school, I've never placed an implant, to uh, learning your kit, learning, you know, what, what implant system, what course. Can you, can you help her make faster, easier decisions, how she can get from zero to one? I, I really think so. I really think so. I, I think that um, the most, I mean, I think that people coming out of dental school, young people, that they get sold by commerce the wrong things. They get sold equipment uh, and that they have to buy. I think what they should do, they should invest in themselves. They should get educated. They should uh, um, uh, do. They train themselves and understand where things uh, where things should be uh, in their own hands. I, I often say it's not mine, but it's it's not the uh, it's not the arrow. It's the Indian, or it's not uh, the song. It's the singer. Uh, I think that that the younger dentists get told by commerce to buy stuff and they think if they buy stuff that they can do things so i think that they should get training there i think there are many many you see my little guide does not teach you how to place an implant my little guide allows you that if you know where an implant should be which is in itself not overly difficult to drill a hole in bone exactly in the right spot and so um, um 
but there is still a certain level that you have to know. There are many programs. Um, uh, MISH has a program. There are many educational programs. So I think that they should learn first on uh, uh, d- d- basics on, 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 on what to do and what not to do. But clearly, if you only prep 10 crowns uh, 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 a year, then your crowns are going to be sucky, right? <laughs> if, you, if you do a lot and you haven't done for a while, they're getting better. And so everything is practice makes makes perfect. It's just that with uh, placing implants, it truly uh, – placing an implant in my – big, and I know I'm going to offend a lot of people. Please really do. Please it's do. Really it's is. dentistry uncensored. <laughs> I, it really is. Piss not them that all difficult. off right now. I know. I know. I do often, and uh, um, and they say it's not professional, but it really is not that difficult. But you have to do a few things right. And so the reason why does someone get an, a surgical guide? It's a balance between fear and greed, right? Fear and greed. Fear that they screw it up, that they drill in the wrong spot, and greed because their wife tells them that's about time they get a new car because their sister married the other guy and they have a new. You have a new Volvo. And so that's the thing they, they, they battle to. And I think a restrictive surgical guide, either be it made with the computer or the one that I developed, which is uh, low cost, goes, uh, you can use in your office, you can do it fast. Um, okay, okay let, let's, that, let's back yeah. up a little bit. Now, this isn't with a 2D X-ray or a 2D pano. No, this, this is just, tied into, Is uh, you have to have a CBCT for this. No. No, not at all. I use um, uh, I use a very very simple. I use a PA radiograph. I measure with a little needle and a stopper the soft tissue in five spots, and that's how we make the guide. Now listen, if I see that we end up really really close to the mandibular nerve, I'm gonna get a cross sectional CT to know where I am. But Howard, that is happening in maybe. Three, four percent of the cases that I need a cone beam. And this, again, is something that will tick people off because now they are saying, oh, you need a cone beam for every case. And it's just, just not true. Uh, and so the biggest competition, you know what the biggest competition for cone beams is, Howard? Short dental implants. Because when you and I started, 13 millimeters was the standard, li- the standard length, right? Oh, and you'd feel shameful if you didn't get at least 15 in there. There you go. And so now we know that that is just not true. If you have an implant, that once it's integrated, it's just the top four, maybe five millimeters that does anything. Everything else is, is useless, but that everything else, the additional length of the implant is what gets us or people into trouble. So um, for me right now, I would say that the eight millimeter implant is my go-to implant in any heel side. Okay. And well- if what what yeah. br- you said eight millimeter in any brand or is there uh, any brand you like more? Uh, I mean, I mean gonna she's gonna, she's going to go to a dental convention and there's going to yeah. be 175 implant companies and it's going to make her freeze. So help help her make a decision. If you if you I, if you just graduated two months ago and you were going to get into short fat uh, and I like short fat implants because they look like me. I mean I don't <laughs> I don't like those tall long skinny implants. I hate there those you things. Go. So what short, fat, <laughs> Howard-looking implant brand would you buy? I mean, I think if you – realistically, I think – that I mean, I was still there when, when uh, all these companies were fighting each other on their surfaces. I was there when there were massive discussions of angled abutments, if that would be, if that would be doable. I think right now that every implant in my – I think almost every implant works. But it's clearly – if you come out of school – you need somebody to hold your hand. You need someone to help you. So I think at that moment in time, the big companies that have reps, that are, they, they, they want to help you. They want to help you. So I think that if you don't really know fully what you are doing, that a big company, and there are many that are reputable and that are good, that they can help you. Um, once you know what you are doing, then your choices are becoming different in what you want to do, right? Do you want to spend less money? I, I it- agree. I was talking to a friend of mine. I said, why do you use Noble BioCare? And he, and he says, because I love the rep. And, and I can tell you kids out there that when you save money and buy an implant from another country because you got it for less money, that, that's all great. You save money. But all the people like you never build an implant practice. I don't know anybody who places 100 implants a month that doesn't have, I mean, 100 implants a year, that doesn't have a really solid human relationship in their town. 
And that's what you need. Because sometimes you'll ask the rep a question and you'll say, you know, I got a problem with blah, blah, blah. She can pick up her cell phone, call three other people in your zip code. And then the next thing you know, you're all going to lunch or you're all going to dinner. And it just gets done when there's a human rep in the field. So if you want to save money, great. Why don't you save all your money and not even buy an implant? But if you want to get it implemented, you need a buddy, a friend in your town to hold your hand. I agree with that 100%. I, I really, really, really think so. I really think that 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 people should really invest in themselves and having in a relationship with a bigger implant company. When you're starting out, it's just gonna pay back big, big time. And the and the, the, the yes, it's gonna be more money. But but d- don't forget, you're also getting something back from them. I mean, that person has to be paid too, and and so they're gonna really, really. Uh, really, really help you uh, in that respect. So, I mean, it's obviously the same with grafting materials. If you have 200 different grafting materials, that means that we in dentistry do not yet fully understand how things work, right? If there's only one that works, then by now we should have figured it out. And it's the same with implants. Um, so, um, I, I think uh, most implants work, or maybe all implants work, um, but I think that the support that you get from your from your big company, that that is basically what is going to be helping you. So that, that's interesting. You, you said if only one, if only one um, bone grafting worked, we, we'd all know it by now, and, and we don't know it by now, do we? No, we have a 200, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that is interesting. Now, you're a huge poster on uh, Dental Town. Uh, my God, you've got uh, half a thousand. You've been a member since day one, 2001. We started in 98, but we didn't start dating until 2001, so your date is, yeah. is basically as early as it goes. You've got 500 posts. What thread, if, if uh, these dentists, uh, you know, um, there's 217,000 on the website, but there's 50,000 on the app. If they were going to go, uh, wh- which 3D click guide thread do you think is the best to explain the whole process on Dental Town? Oh, I, I don't know. I don't even know of these things as threads. But, I mean, I have obviously a bunch of them. Um, I, I think your Dental Town is absolutely fantastic. And we in dentistry, we should be extremely grateful for a guy like you who has been willing to put something like this together because um, it's such an amazing tool for people to learn. And and I would say that that in the beginning, I was not really posting and I was just kind of reading up a little bit. Um, um, some people are very aggressive and I, I don't know if their mothers were not nice to them when they were kids. Um, but I think increasingly people are nicer and people that do a good job are also willing to share. Uh, um, and so I think there's so much to learn that people can get stuff for free. That's not enough to not do official training or to get to get uh, um, whatever. If you have no education, or get a program like a one or two week pro, get something solid for someone who knows what they're doing. But all in all, I think it's absolutely amazing what is on on that on that site. And I myself, I mean, I think that if people go, they can look up my name and they can look up the different threats. I I assume. Um, uh, on the website, on the 3dclickguide.com uh, website, we have tons of videos and, and, and things that you can do. Um, but I think that the, the I myself have learned a lot, and I'm still learning what people post uh, on, on that site. And what is nice, as I told you, I mean, I, I, I write a lot of articles, I publish a lot of articles, but if I think of something new, uh, then it's going to be uh, six months before I have it photographed, it's going to be another six months before I wrote an article, then I'm going to submit it, that's another year. So before something is in a published in a magazine, it's going to be two, two years old. Where um, if I uh, if I put it on your website, then it's there immediately. So I think there's a massive amount of sharing, and increasingly, good people are willing to to show their stuff, and and I I think it's it's fantastic. Well, I, I think you've shared an amazing uh, amount of information. I mean, I'm I'm a hugest fan of your threads. Um, you know, well, one you. thing I, I don't want to. Um, I don't want to be disrespectful of implants, but, you know, in the fact that in 2005 to 2015, the average dentist, made, their income went down 30000 I mean, it was, I read your thing yesterday. Yeah, yeah it was $219,000 a year, and now it's a one seventy four. And that's because you said something interesting. You said, uh, do the same job for less money or a better job for more money, but the PPOs have lowered our prices 40%. And then everybody wants to buy all this great technology, so our costs go up, the price comes down, and they lose income. But what I'm most excited about is, you know, the the PPOs, which 82% of the dentists take, they set the fees on cleaning exams, x-rays. They do not set the fees on 
Invisalign, sleep apnea, implants, bone grafting, um, and so many. But like when I'm in like Malaysia and Indonesia, they say, well, uh, my they, they say their entire practice is a loss leader for cleanings, exams, and fillings. But they do like ten Invisalign cases a month for fifteen hundred cash, and that's yeah. that's what pays all the bills. Um, I, I know dentists who uh, are on PPOs, uh, but they start extracting too. They start bone grafting everyone. And now, I mean, and now they, they're and they in the profit, and now they're in the yes. profit zone. And they should they should place implants. I mean, again, should, and should they know. be bone grafting all the extraction sites? Uh, I mean, it, de- it depends on what um, it depends on what they want to do uh, what they want to do later on. If you start if you start out, I mean, start out with some simple bone grafting. Again, don't think everything is one thing. Eighty percent is easy, and twenty percent is difficult. So stay away from the twenty percent that's difficult. And do the 80 percent that's easy and start out with things that if you place implants and you do your first implant you do it for free on the 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 the, 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 the husband of your assistant and then you've done 10 so now you start you start charging for the implant itself uh, again for the, the neighbor that you have in that way you can you can get going i mean it is it's as i said i've, I've restored thousands of implants i've only placed about 800 but I tell you, it is from a business perspective, and I don't want to bring it just down to that, but it is absolutely fantastic how much money that brings in. On top of that, your patients already like you. They want to be with you. They don't want to be sent somewhere else. Uh, you make so an, interesting, you can, an interesting point. A research monkey in, uh, in the United States is about $80,000, and your mother-in-law is for free. So your, you <laughs> your mother-in-law is just a really great research monkey. The first two sinus lifts I ever did was on my mother-in-law. And, is, uh, that the one that, is that the one that you now have or the one that you, the, that you used yeah. to have? The, the, the mother-in-law, <laughs> I, I probably shouldn't even say that with him, but, but what was neat about that is, uh, uh, no, my four boys' grandma. But what's neat about <laughs> that is um, you're, I, I, know, uh, I know this little adorable dentist that just graduated in Wichita, Kansas, and uh, – um, she wanted to try a procedure. Every yeah. one of her uncles was like wanted to be the research monkey. Yeah, I mean, they they, they couldn't they couldn't even you know they they were beside themselves wanting to volunteer for this job. Uh, yeah. So uh, so uh, that's, that's, that's your mother-in-law calling. That she's still hurting from that sinus lift. <laughs> no, actually, that was no, 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 uh, that was calling. I yeah. mean, pe- people shoot. I mean, I mean, get 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 with the program. It really is not that difficult, but don't don't do a really difficult case. The first ones you're doing. I mean, make sure that you understand your limitations. So your first cases are going to have ample of bone. Use a guide. I mean, and and, and take your time. Um, use the rep from the company to help you. Get somewhat educated that you know where things end. But don't get scared away that you have to have like. Three years of uh, of of, uh, of nonstop education, because that's the, obviously not how it not not how it works, uh, and and so uh, and then start using, I mean people that you can help that have that you can do something nice for other people. You can give them a tooth for a little little amount of money, and once you are confident that you are really worth it, and that you can do a good job, then you. Uh, then you start charging full fee, whatever that whatever give that her, is. Give her some uh, give her some talking points because. She, I, I think street smart people learn on Dental Town. They learn online. They learn on YouTube. They learn on free podcasts. I, I think the silly ones are the ones that every time they want to learn one thing, they got to fly across the country for five grand and buy air to. And and she thinks that I think the best CE in the world is to walk across the street to your oral surgeon or your periodontist or your endodontist. And she thinks that the oral surgeon doesn't want her to learn how to place implants. That the periodontist doesn't want her to learn implant. Why in the world would an oral surgeon help her compete against her referring to the oral surgeon? Which I is- mean, there is there's so much research that has shown that, and if oral surgeons teach their referring dentists to place implants, that they will actually refer more to the oral surgeon. Because once you understand what you can do with dental implants, you understand you are going to do the low-hanging fruit. You're not going to do the difficult ones. You're not going to do a front tooth on a girl who just got a five million contract as a model for a, for a, for a cosmetic firm. You want to do the easy stuff in the back, and there's plenty of it. And so you, if you have a normal relationship, then your oral surgeon, he is willing to help you. I mean, they understand that 
that it's they don't get everything anymore. They get the stuff that they're trained for. They're trained for the difficult stuff or your period honest. And then increasingly you expand and then you get more comfortable um, uh, do, doing your things. Exactly, and it, it's it's like it's like the oral surgeon wants to have a relationship with you. That's what's paramount. And then yeah. and then you're gonna do this surgical guide and place the implant, but you're gonna come across cases you're not gonna want to touch with the tempo pole. It's the same thing with orthodontists. The orthodontists that I know that that are open doors to teach all the referrals how to do Invisalign, usually on average have two or three full time associates. That's how busy they are. And then the orthodontist who tries to shame and guilt you because you tried to do an Invisalign case, they're they're withering in, in the wind. It, 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 this is, I, I would call our generate. I'm the the 2016 the the thank you sharing economy. The more you share, the more you give out, the more you're going to get back in karma. So if you're young um, and you got a job, say you're in corporate, uh, a lot of corporates got great uh, CE. I know Heartland and Pacific have amazing continuing educational learning implants, but gosh darn, just Google map it. Just get up your iPhone, type in oral surgeon and see which, which red pins pop up that are walking distance and go shake their hand. And if you're embarrassed, tell them Howard sent you. I mean, I mean, I in my office, Howard, I have at least 10 Younger, I mean, I'm not talking young, but at least 10 dentists that are on a regular basis in my office, unannounced, and they're spending a day with me or half a day. And I, I mean, I'm I'm old enough. I share everything I have. That's uh, I mean, years ago, I don't know if you know uh, Rudy Slavicek. Rudy Slavicek is my my hero. Uh, that I got trained by him. Uh, um, he's a professor in Vienna. He's I think 85 right now. He's the developer of the Sam Articulator, and he once said when I was young that at one point. Every student has to become the teacher. And, and, and so I, for instance, when I, you see my stuff on Dental Town, I show everything I have. I don't hold back. I don't, I don't have to. How come to, you don't make an online CE course for us? Yeah, and I, I promised I would do it, and then I forgot, and then my life took over, and then and I, I promised Howard I would do it, and now yeah. this is a good reminder. I should well, do you it know, again. I, got, I got to tell you something, because we're, uh, we're both in our 50s. Uh, I'll be 54 uh, this month, but the thing is, um, I wrote a book, uh, Uncomplicated Business, and the sales yeah, yeah, were, going, were going really, it. really good. And then, yeah. and then this guy told me that, genera- that I'm a baby boomer, but Generation Nexters and Millennials don't read. They only do... Uh, sound file. So I sat down yeah. on Skype. I opened my book. I read it for five and a half hours. I put the sound file up on Amazon. That's blowing away the book. And you and I were old school. We always went to conventions and courses and institutes. The millennials sit on their iPhone and we put up 350 courses. They've been viewed over 600,000 times. So yeah. when you when you write um, so when you do an, uh, a course on an iPhone or an iPad or a course, you're going to crush the whole thirty and under crowd, and yeah, that, that's yeah. the future of dentistry. So yeah, and, and and I think but like what you have now. Uh, I mean, when we started dental down down down, I mean pictures were difficult. Right now, it's really easy to upload pictures. I mean, we're obviously as dentists, we're very visual. And so I try to really document and, and, and add to that. No, no, I will teach a course. I will do it. I mean, I have all the stuff. Is just <laughs> just the time of the day. So go in, So I, I go like on. these. You know, the, the the kids don't understand that when I got out of school, a molar root canal was a thousand bucks, and and back then you just submit your fees and indemnity insurance. They pay one hundred percent for clean exam and X rays, eighty percent for fillings and root canals, fifty percent for crowns. So I would submit uh, a root canal for a thousand, and they just cut you a check for eight hundred. There's no questions asked. Now it's all PPO where they've lowered the fees forty percent. So now your root canal fee is six hundred to eight hundred. But the cost of doing a root canal and, you know, the all inflation, the cost. So you make so much less money. And what's so amazing about Invisalign, sleep apnea, implants, and bone grafting is no one is setting your fee. Oh, I, I, I mean, I'm so obviously. So you can I'm, be in I'm, the profit zone every single time you're doing these. And I mean, and, and Howard, I mean, it, it, it takes me 20 minutes to make a surgical guide. 20 minutes. The patient is getting numb. And they're paying because in, in my office, they pay before anything happens, right? That, that, that takes a lot of the stress away. And then placing the implant. I mean, if you do that, if, it really is just a drill press. Minutes. And so I can do a whole case in, in, in crown, I mean, two hours. The amount of money is amazing. But I just don't want to make it that it's only about money. I do a really, really, really good job. And I think that that everybody should do a really, really, really good job. But that obviously gets increasingly difficult if other people are telling you that you cannot get uh, the, the amount of money that you should get for that. 
Yeah, well, you know, when, when people don't want to talk about money, you know, they don't believe in math or gravity. And I mean, uh, well, well, let, let's go back to your home country of uh, Europe. Um, yeah. We just, uh, we, Ryan and I were just uh, lecturing in uh, Asia and, uh, and Europe and in Tokyo, Paris, France and London, the free health insurance only pays $100 for a molar root canal. Now, those guys will all tell you, you know, you buy the five files at $5 each or $7 each. I mean, you can't even do a molar root canal. I mean, if you could do a molar root canal for a profit of 100 that means when you do a, a PPO root canal for 600 that you put five Benjamins cash in your pocket. Now, you know that doesn't happen. No, so no, I that, mean, so yeah. when they talk about free health care, be wary of free. And, and what's, you know, when they pay cash for their iPhones, they pay cash for their cars, they pay cash for their house, you paid cash for that pretty pink tie, you pay cash for everything in the world, and to have a mentality that you have no control over your body, and I got this this insurance, and I just have to do whatever the insurance says, no. So they came in for a PPO, the 82% are PPO practices, they come in for a PPO and they got an extraction, but now you have a chance to go for margin profit and say, we need to bone graft that socket. And then we I need mean, to come 100%, back. And, yes. So, so tell tell them how, how go go through go through how you you do that. Go through the bone graft, the implant. Do, do I you, mean both. Do you extract I mean, bone the tooth graft, and place the implant right then. Talk about. Talk I mean, about it, all that. it depends. If you if you start out, you should absolutely not do that. When you start out, you take the tooth out, you graft it, and there are many many different ways that you that you can graft it. I mean, there's just look whatever product you want to use. Um, I mean, some. there's obviously, huh? N name the easiest ones. I mean, the easiest one, and now I'm, I'm blanking on the name. I think it's called Osseo, Osseo Plug, Osteogen um, from Implement. It's a collagen plug that they have infused uh, with some of their grafting material. It's, it's just like a little plug. The extract, you stick it's the thing like in. It's kind of like the old gel foam. Yeah, exactly. But then it's impregnated with, uh, with, with grafting material. So it doesn't fly out all the place. It's super, super, super easy. I mean, uh, it's super easy. Then, if you want to have a more serious case, then you graft it with whatever material you want, and then you should place a, a, a membrane on top. Osteogenics, these PTFE membranes, they're really fantastic. They, they, they are so easy to use. You get attached tissue everywhere. Then when you come back four months later to place your implant, it's an easy case. So if you start out, don't start out with immediate – it's or with aesthetic cases. Start out, in the, start out in the back. But that's why I like – I like a surgical guide. I like to know that I don't care where the tongue is and spit and blood and the patient moving. That when I drill down that drill, that I know that I cannot go any deeper than I said it. So I don't have to be nervous that I'm going to hit the nerve or the sinus or anything like that. So a surgical guide helps me to do surgery. I mean, no stress, absolutely no stress. And so I think that everybody should get into it. Uh, um, but you obviously should understand what it is that you're doing and so a lot of people say are oh, you if you cannot uh, if you cannot stop an arterial bleeding you should not go into dental implants i think that is just not true i mean i know nothing about cars when you had cars at first you knew that to knew you had to know how to fix a car right now i don't even know where to put the the, the liquid for the for the, the, the 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 windshield uh, washers so if you use a surgical guide that allows you to only drill a hole exactly in the spot that you have determined that you don't have to be nervous about the nerve. You don't have to be nervous about uh, uh, the arteries. And so I think that for many, many people that are listening, that are thinking of getting into it or getting into it a little bit, that a fully restrictive surgical guide, either the one that we developed, the 3D clay guide, or one that you wait with the computer, um, that that helps you. And then if you don't want to use a surgical guide, once you are better or you feel confident, then, then do it. I mean, you don't use uh, surgical guides all the time, do you? No. Shoot, I, I'm I'm so old that the uh, the fancy X-ray of my time at Pano, uh, I remember the upgrade where they added the R on one side and the L on the other. <laughs> I thought that was the coolest damn upgrade that ever yes. happened. The C, upgrading it to 3D was just minorly compared to that big old R and the L. <laughs> no, no, but I mean the thing is that if you do surgery, I mean, I mean you're nervous. I mean, and so anytime when somebody is nervous. They do – They when they're under stress, they do – they make mistakes that otherwise they wouldn't. And so for me, a surgical – a restrictive surgical guide allows me 
to get that implant in in a very, very reliable way. It's always good. It's always screwy taint if I want it to be. I don't have to go for a custom abutment because it, it, it twisted a little bit uh, because the patient's tongue came up or something like that. For me, that helps. That's very, very, very simple. And so, um, yes, people should do that. And they should not buy uh, comb beam CTs. Uh, they should have somebody, if they have a case, where they can send it to. But it should, if, if, you, if it's true what you said, that the average dentist right now takes, has $175,000 income, just only that for all that slaving away and all these years of education. You're going you're gonna to buy a machine that's 150000 Now you need to have a room because you have to pay rent for that machine because it has to stand somewhere. You have to teach an assistant how to do it. And then she goes on maternity leave, so now you have another one uh, uh, how to do it. Uh, so I don't think that that is very, uh, very, very helpful. Ryan and I, neither of us can find this Oxygen implement. Could you, do you have it laying around? They're getting it from me. Okay, good. I think you building a course where you, you show these people that, you know, because there's stress about these PPO practices. And they, Here, uh, I got it. Okay, there you go. What is it? Oh, Osteogen plug by who? Plug. Impla or Implant Dent LTD. Spell it. I I-M-P-L-A-D-E-N-T. D and then LTD. LTD. Implodent. And then what's Implodent. the name of it? Osteogen. O S T E O. And then G E N. Osteogen plug. It's bovine collagen with a calcium appetite crystal. Do you know? It, do you know anybody at that company? No. No idea. Oh, yeah, that would be, uh, yeah, oxygen plugs. Okay, great. Thanks a lot for that. Now, now I got I mean, it. It, it. It is. It's. 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 A, it, it'll take you a good minute. And so, yeah, that's a that that that's a game changer because these these people, uh, um, the, the these people are you know the PPO fees are so low that by the time they pay their rent, mortgage, equipment, staff, insurance, health insurance, er everything, you know, a lot of these people are having you know eighty eighty five percent overhead, and then they, they can go into that PPO practice and start offering you know bone grafting, pay out of pocket for these PPO price extractions, then go back and place an implant. So, so, so the first course, the first place to, um, you said to learn was mesh. I said go across the street to the oral surgeon and periodontist. Na 100%. But you, but you did, you didn't name any uh, brands of implants where they could start googling for reps. I mean, just name. I mean, I, I think the big ones: Noble Biocare, Strauman, um, 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 Biomet 3i, um, 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 Densply. I mean, these I think are the four biggest. Uh, players, I think they have reps uh, um, everywhere. And, and I mean, another thing, Howard, what I think is is, is, is is interesting is that if you learn how to place implants, it's not only good business, but it is also fun to do. It is, we are dentists. I mean, it is, it's, a, it's a nice thing to do and to do something that can be that successful. I mean, you can have a 90, 95% success rate. You can really help you can really help people. So a lot of people are afraid, okay, what happens if it doesn't work? It's not a big deal. If the implant doesn't fuse with the bone, I mean, your, your, your grandmother can take, can take it out. Uh, you, you, you clean it up. The only thing that you want to prevent is that you don't go into the wrong spots. And that's, again, I don't want to uh, push it to death, but that, that's where a surgical guide helps. I place every implant with a surgical guide, and I have, uh, I have, I have experience. I do it because it makes my life Okay, easy. Now, now I want you to treatment plan a case because she sees her patient. She knows yeah. who, who's in her chair. What, what, yeah. would be, what would be the easy, low-hanging fruit implants to place? And what would be the hard ones at the top of the tree that you don't want to get there until you've done 100 or more? I mean, the easiest implant to place if you have a healed side is the, is the second upper premolar. Second upper premolar, there's nothing that can go wrong. I mean, even if you would drill into the sinus, it does. It makes no difference. You can drill into the sinus. When we do zygoma implants, they just rip the whole side up and they do all things. Uh, if they do the four surgeries, they cross everything. And if a dentist has to do a, a two millimeter sinus bump, they get all excited and they have to do a comb beam CT because they're gonna, so we are just not used to it. I mean, the sinus is nothing. So I would say the second premolar in the maxilla, easy, easy peasy. And then just stay in the stay in the posterior. The lower lower uh, first molars are uh, are going to be e easy in many cases. Um, specifically, if you use an eight millimeter implant, don't use a thirteen millimeter implant. It's not going to help you. Don't use a ten even. 
um, and so if you stay away from trouble, then it, it, it just makes everything easier. And that, easier. that is I, a huge game changer because we were, we were taught that the oh. implant had to go all the way out the back of their head, around the moon three times, or it wouldn't stay. And what, what percent of your implants are eight millimeter? I, I would say that in, in a heel sight, 100%. And I mean, let wow. me say that. Let, let, let's make it 90 because the other ones I do six millimeters. I just it, – it, so, so you have to so know. That, an, an eight millimeter is a game changer because now it's going to be a lot more difficult to hit the inferior alveolar nerve or the maxillary sinus, correct? Your, your Honor, I rest my case 100%. And so there is no – and I know this is going to take people off. There is no need for a comb beam CT. Once you, you see, I'm not against it because I have in, I'm in a building with 200 dentists here in San Francisco. We have an amazing X-ray. Are you on Sutter? Yeah. You're in that building, Sutter? Yeah. What, what's the address? 455 Sutter? 450 Sutter. 450, 450 Sutter. Sutter. How, how good is that that I knew the address of that? There's only – it, 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 there, that's the uh, most dentists in one building in America. 100 percent. It's and fantastic. And you're in there. Oh, yeah. And how long yeah. have you been in there? Well, uh, 25 years, 24 years, 25 years. So a years. lot of people ask, how, can, how many dentists are in there? 200. A lot of people and say, have, how can 200 have, dentists – survive in one building i mean you never find 200 starbucks in one building you never find 200 mcdonald's in one building how, how does 200 dentists in one building survive it's just fine it's great i mean i'm on the 25th floor there's never ever that anybody walks in uh, from a street sign it doesn't exist um how many floors it, tall is it 26 so you didn't 26. make the penthouse? How come you didn't make the penthouse? I know, but I'm very, I'm pretty close. <laughs> I'm pretty close. I'm pretty close. But I have an amazing view. We have oh, the, I know. the Alcatraz Coy Tower. No, it's a really, it's a very, very fun place to, to practice. I love yeah. San Francisco. Yeah. My oldest son, Eric, was conceived on, uh, what was it, Pier 39, San Francisco? <laughs> I, was at a, I was at a G. John Schofel uh, endodontic uh, apicolectomy retrofill course. And yeah. uh, staying at uh, was it is it Pier Thirty Nine? Is that on the Sheridan? Yeah, 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 yeah the yeah, Sheridan yeah. at Pier Thirty Nine. That's where yeah. my oldest son was conceived. And um, <laughs> yeah, I love that town. I love Mark Twain's quote where he said, "The coldest winter he ever spent was the summer, summer in San, San Francisco." San Francisco. <laughs> That's <laughs> so right now. true. That's that is so see. true. It is always yeah. uh, there's always a breeze off the ocean. So if you're not sure if you should pack a jacket, you always pack a jacket. And my favorite restaurant, probably in America, is the. Um, the olive, the olive, no, the the, the uh, rose with the uh, the is it the some oh, stinking rose? Yeah, the some, stinking rose. Yeah, the, the garlic rose, rose. Garlic, garlic. <laughs> and it, it's it, it uses more garlic than any restaurant in in the United States. Forty, what is it? Forty thousand pounds of garlic a year. Oh Maybe my god, I, I love San Fran. No, no, but so a setting where we are is very a downtown setting. I mean, it, it will scare a lot of people. I must have at least 200 lawyers as patients. Uh, uh, so uh, it's a very downtown well, well, setting. Well, let's, a lot of family. let's key in more on that um, that eight millimeter. I mean, I mean, there's been a lot of game changing. You know, it's a convergence, a perfect storm of implants. It wasn't just panos went from 2D to 3D cone beams. It wasn't just uh, a lot of things, but one uh, surgical guides. But another one that was a huge game changer was that shorter implants work. Well, I mean, and what, it, what does this do to the chance that – because they're worried in fear. They're going to hit the inferior alveolar nerve. They're going to hit the sinus. Saying. That's what I'm saying. And, and, how, yeah. and what, how hard is it to hit the inferior alveolar nerve with an 8 millimeter? Um, um, I mean if you have massive resorption, it's possible. So, but in most of the cases, it's not. And there is a very, very easy metric on it. If there was a tooth before, right, and then you graft – and you have an implant that is shorter than where the tooth used to be, you will never ever in your whole life impossible be in the nerve. So you don't need a comb beam. Again, I'm not saying you So you're you saying shouldn't. when you extract the tooth, you should measure from the CEJ to no, the no, apex no, no, of the no, root? No, 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 no. Extract the tooth, graft it, and then three months later, you can still see the outline where the tooth was. But you could, at the extraction, you could measure... On the yeah, you, get a tooth. Little, you get a little resorption at the crest, so that is that would throw that would throw you off. But you will see if you place an eight millimeter implant, and if it, if it's tight, place a six millimeter implant. I mean, there are plenty. I mean, I just recently read an article. Straumann has four millimeter implants that are that are uh, splinted together. So 
eight might already be old. You have on your on 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 uh, um, on your um, uh, dental town. You have uh, amazing uh, surgeon uh, from from England, Bill. Uh, Bill Schaefer. <laughs> Bill Schaefer. I mean, he's been showing not one thousands. And, and so you know what I love the most about Bill is, you know, on Facebook and social media, people can be brutal. And on Dental Town, we have a report of abuse, but I mean, in Dental Town, you know, a lot of people always say, well, you know, I have the freedom of speech. No, idiot, that you have freedom of speech with your government. The Constitution is between you and your government. I'm private property. And if you Just come in nice. my house with your free speech, I am going to shoot you. But uh, if, if someone, if you say something and someone makes you feel bad, Hit report abuse. We play we play baseball. Three strikes you're out. We ban someone every single week. Um, but Bill Schaefer is such a polite man from London. And look at the flack he took ten years ago, placing these eight millimeters. And everybody's saying you're crazy. Never gonna work. Oh, that's only a two year follow up. It's still gonna fail. And now a decade later, he looks like the smartest man in the room, doesn't he? Howard, I've been there. I've done that. Um, um, uh, um, a lot of people tell me it looks crazy. And now, uh, fast forward 20 years, guys, I've been saying that for the longest time. The, the problem is that, that people have then forgotten that what you've done. But you will see that so one of the things is that a shorter implant will give an enormous amount of in decrease in stress. It gives you the same outcome. Why would you have a longer implant? Even if okay, you have well, a longer implant. Explain that because that, that's not really – it doesn't really make sense. I mean wouldn't – wouldn't a fence post, I mean, you're a farmer and you're putting up a fence post. Wouldn't a 10-foot pole in the ground be better than a 5-foot pole in the So explain, explain the counterintuitives. How could a shorter implant work as good as a longer implant? I mean, it doesn't even make sense. Well, it, and, and that's why initially people didn't do it. But then we started to understand if you do a stress analysis, they put them in this plastic and you can get these colors, you will actually see right. that all the stresses are in the top. But the big, big difference is that bone is a living tissue. You have living bone cells attaching to the top. If you put a pole into the sand, the sand is just not cohesive uh, tissue. It's not a, a, or, a, or a, nail, a nail in a wall. Because it is actually an attachment of the bone tied to the titanium, that's what makes the difference. And so we now know that. And, and as I said, I mean, obviously, Bill has shown m many, many cases, not 10, but thousands that that it just works but it you takes know, you know, sometimes um, a little bit of time in dentistry you're, you're talking yeah. about the length but walk, walk her back through time because when you and i were little they were trying to put ha coatings on implants and they, they thought that was going to be yeah. so yeah. there's still a lot of questions what kind of surface should they have on that implant i i, I don't think that it, every implant is fda approved it will it, it it will have a surface that that's fine and again um, Noble Biocare has a Tiunite surface. Uh, um, um, Strauman has their uh, surface that they uh, they change the uh, the polarity of it, so it has a different a different attraction to uh, to uh, to liquids. I don't think that anybody has proven that their surface is better. So there's very likely multiple things at work. We right now have um, titanium implant, um, 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 zirconia implants that are that, that are coming along. Zirconia integrates. I mean, not only titanium integrates. Um, so I, I think if you Today, have a product that is FDA approved. It, it, it'll work. So, are you placing any zirconian implants? No, I, I I can see no benefit to it. Okay, uh, another another question that um, these kids are having is, uh, um, there's been a lot of implants that have been placed now for 10, 20, 30 years. I mean, there's just millions of them are stacking up. And yeah. she's going in and doing a hygiene exam, and the patient says, "Oh, everything's great. I can eat corn on the cob." But she's looking at this implant. He has no pain, no problem. He's eating hamburgers and corn on the cob. But she's looking at it, and half the bone, it's in function. There's no pain. But half the bone's gone, and, and it's red, inflamed, periamplantitis. And, and they, the, the kids rightfully tell me that the specialists in their town can't even quantify when periamplantitis is a failure to retreat or not. They, they don't even think there's standard definitions of what is a failure? What needs a so? Walk her through. How do you treat? How do you prevent periimplantitis? How do you treat periimplantitis? And when do you, Lambert, pull the plug on it and take it out and replace it? Is that I enough questions that, for you at one time? No, that it's perfect, and I actually will have an answer for you. Um, um, th th recently, just last week, there was there came a report out of it. Was a conference in Rome where they had uh, uh, seventeen really really smart people getting together on implantitis. 
deconsense, which has been there for a little bit. Implantitis, periimplantitis happens in 1% to 2% of implants. 1% to 2% of implants. We have some implants that have a little bit of bone loss, but they stabilize again after a while. So if you have a little bit of bone loss around your implant, I don't get nervous. And if at one point something is massively progressive, you take the implant out, you graft it, and you place a new implant. That's also why a shorter implant is going to be helpful because if you have an 18 millimeter implant and it has 8 millimeter bone loss, trust me, Howard, the last 10 millimeters is going to be rock solid in that bone. You will never get that sucker out. Yeah. So uh, um, if you have a little bit of bone loss, no worries. Um, um, if you get if you lose the implant, which you will in, 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 in a few percent of the cases, uh, then you take it out and you start over again. Uh, and that's what it is. 100% success doesn't exist. And let me actually, actually one more thing that will helpful, be helpful for people. Never, ever, ever say that your implant failed. The implant, we say, oh, that's a failed implant. It's not a failed implant. The implant is still intact. The bone did not fuse with the implant. And to the patient, they say, your bone failed to fuse with the implant. So now all of a sudden, they are saying, wow, my bone, what can we do? If you say your implant failed, they say, you know what, you sold me the implant, you're going to fix it. So the semantics uh, makes a big difference. So instead of saying the implant failed, you should say you failed the implant by being obese with diabetes with high blood pressure and smoking. My implant was fine, but your yes. fat, high blood pressure, diabetic, obese butt failed my implant. Is that what you're saying be, to say? Well, maybe that's what you should think. But the moment, the moment you, the moment you say your the implant failed, they say yes, but you sold me the implant. Where in reality, the implant is titanium, cannot do much, right? Oh. If you if you say your bone does not did not fuse with the implant, which is really what is happening, it will be a completely different. Uh, um, uh, atmosphere in, in, in that room, that patient will want to help you to, 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 to help her fix it instead of thinking that you did something wrong. So I want to ask another thing that's confusing her. She's hearing, um, she wants to get in implants, maybe she's already placed 10, but some people are making her feel that she can't really be an implantologist if she's not uh, drawing blood, spinning blood. No, 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 no. What, and, what do you and, and think so about that's that? What, I, that's what I'm saying. Don't think that you have to know everything. I mean, not not every chef started knowing all the recipes. They started out with a line cook doing the simple stuff, cooking the potatoes. So take your easy cases. Do the cases that are not super, super difficult. Do them on people that like you. Do it for little money, and you will get experience. The same, when I did my first fill at Howard, I mean, it took me an afternoon to do the prep, and then the patient had to come back to put the amalgam in. And now you, you, you would do a filling without thinking, right? So, I mean, practice makes perfect. And this is nothing different. So don't think that you have to know everything to get going. And you have to be good as, as, as Mish or as, 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 as Whirly or something like that. I thought that was pretty cool how you, when you used the chef example, you knew I was Irish, so you said potatoes. <laughs> I thought that was pretty slick how you just slid that in there. Something. I'm going to have to get the beta. Anyway. Well, um, so that is an hour. That was an amazing hour. Um, again, the, sorry, uh, Tigger, you got to get off my notes here. So I want you to go to 3dclickguide.com, and I want you to uh, uh, get a starter kit. A one kit is 139 A two kit is 278 But you guys got $350,000 of student loans. Your income's dropping about 4000 bucks a year. You've gone from... Uh, 219 to 175 so uh, 10 more years of that and uh, you know you're 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 gonna be low so I want you to focus on things that pay your bills things that have margin uh, orthodontics Invisalign sleep apnea implants bone grafting and implants is uh, by the way when I got my fellowship at the Miss Institute uh, back in the late 80s early 90s and my diplomat in the International Congress on Implantology I swear to God Placing an implant was 10 times harder than it is oh. 25 years later. Yeah. I mean, 25 years ago, it was crazy hard. And, yeah. and you kids, um, um, it's so much easier. And you don't need uh, to buy a, a cone beam. Uh, oh. Your oral surgeon and your periodontist are going to send you uh, cookies and cakes on Christmas and Thanksgiving and Hanukkah. They're always trying to think of ways to, to get your attention 
And when you call them and say, I got a patient that needs a CBCT, they'll probably, what percent of the periodontists would not even charge you for that if you came over there with a patient to get a CBCT? I don't know. I mean, but they, I mean, they, if they have a machine there, it doesn't cost them anything. And they I, just I know. Want to help so, you. so you don't want to buy a CBCT. The other thing I don't like about a CBCT is you and I, remember when we got our first cell phone, it was either a Motorola or a Nokia. And, yeah. and, and when Steve Jobs said he was going to come on the iPhone, everyone laughed. And now where is Motorola and Nokia? And <laughs> I'll give you another example. The Fortune 500 in 1950, by 2015, 88 percent of those companies were gone that's yeah. called creative destruction the thing i don't like about cbcts is that like iphone you buy a cbct in five years later there's going to be another one that's newer greater better and, and, and howard and, and in the majority of cases you don't need it and i know this is upsetting a lot of people but you don't there are cases where you have to have one but they are the exception so i would say get a surgical guide i prefer mine of course because i think it's cheap it's easy it's fast but otherwise use one with the computer. Use shorter implants, less stress, excellent result. Use cases that are easy for it at the beginning. Use people that you like so you basically help people and you don't charge them money and you get, you, get, you get mileage. And then you will see, you will do fine. It is really such a fun thing to do. And, and, and my, my pet peeve to the, uh, the seminar, uh, the speakers out on the circuit, is they always, if it's crown and bridge, they always want to show full mouth rehab. If it's implants, they always want to show all on four, blah, blah, blah. But in this great country of America, 96 out of 100 crowns are done one tooth at a time. The most likely missing tooth is the first molar. The most likely extracted tooth, first molar. Most likely yep. root canal, first molar. And that, when can we expect you to make us an online C course of, of extracting a first molar, Bone grafting it with that osteogen, that easy one, uh, coming back, using your surgical guide. I have all the stuff ready. I will I'm put trying, it I'm trying to shame and guilt you into a uh, – No, no, no. It, <laughs> it, 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 I, I, Howard, it's easy. I have all the stuff. I can do it. I'll organize it. I promise. I will I will definitely do that. Okay. And I uh, and, and my uh, only thing I can't figure out is if I'd rather uh, have a drink and party with you in San Fran or, or Amsterdam. I'm sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go with Amsterdam. <laughs> That has got to be <laughs> that has got to be one of the coolest cities in the world. It, it's good, but San Francisco is pretty darn. San Francisco is my favorite city in the United States, but in North America, I think I'd have to go with uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. There you go. Have you been up there? I've been there. Yes, I actually um, the, 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 the 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 my guide is made in Vancouver. Oh so. really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is a uh, uh, I'll, yeah, and I'll tell you that first, that that's both of those cities are my two favorite cities. Uh, Manhattan is good if the weather is cooperating. But, um, hey, seriously, Lambert, thank you so much for being a townie for 16 years, for there 500 you know posts. I mean, my God, you have shared so much. You've educated me so much. Um, I have lectured uh, just recently in about three different contents, and um, people call you and Bill Schaefer by name. Uh, they'll, they'll say, you know, they'll say, well, Lampert said, blah, blah, blah. And, and that's in Malaysia, Indonesia, yeah. Catman. Oh, yeah, I mean, um, I'm happy. You, I like you, to share. I like to show and I want to thank you because you made it possible. No, that's that was big, actually uh, all that's a big brought, that was all brought to you by Al Gore, who invented the Internet. There you go. Hallelujah. Hey, I'm going to work. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for an hour of your time. Goodbye. Bye. Howard.